Hello everybody, welcome to my new live stream where we are creating an entire game in C from scratch. Well, you have been, if you have been following along our series, you'll see that we've come a long way ever since from the first episode where we started out with a blank file, no libraries, no nothing, we typed every code we needed. And if you come here in the YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash danzaydan, you can watch all the episodes from the very first one that started out with nothing ever since the last episode, which was episode 6, they started cleaning up the gameplay and getting like the game a little bit more cohesive. And that was pretty cool. And also we debugged a lot of stuff that we accumulated in the other streams. If you want to come here in the itch.io page, which is danzaydan.itch.io, you can click on this first game here, Break Arcade Games Out. I don't know if that will be the final name. And you can download each episode's executable and the source code. So if you want to follow along, you can go to last episode, which was episode 6, source code, and download. That's what I'll be using today. Okay, so let me show you the game, show where we are at. So now we have a pretty solid game in terms of uh, the basic of the game. Like, we have a breakout clone to start with, and we have, like, we added a score system, we added a life system, and... Uh, yeah, so see, I just died there, and uh, we debugged a lot of stuff last time about the mouse input, about the uh, yeah the mechanics overall. So yeah, let me just try to get the ball there. Okay, so we get can get a lot of points by doing that, and uh, yeah, so that's the basic idea. We also added a lot more game modes. So this one we you do like a, a little bit of a different shape of blocks and then we have power-ups and we finished all those last time see we have like the three shot power up let's see which one is this guy yeah this is the comet that goes through all the guys yeah um, okay yeah so, okay, so that's the, the other game mode. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And then we have our cool, interesting, crazy game modes. This one is Pong. So we are playing Pong as in a breakout game. So yeah, we should really, you know, start doing more interesting stuff with that. Like pretty much just adding different acceleration for the for the enemy ball, that'll be cool enough, right? And then we have Space Invaders. So, yeah, that's what we did last time. What we are going to do now is we're going to make the game uh, have a better feel to it. So that's a term that a lot of people use, like game feel and game juice, which is basically tuning both the visuals, the sound, but we don't have sound yet, and uh, the overall, the overall tweaks like acceleration and things like that to make the game not only more responsive but more, I don't know, like interesting to interact with. So it's going to be like a game as an interactive software kind of approach. We noted a lot of stuff that we could add. Let me just load the project here. We noted a lot of stuff we could add in terms of uh, this game few stuff, like we did. Uh, Fix the baller and do like th three ball color, squash and stretch, show timer, screen shake, make the walls move, ball tray, particle system. Let's add a couple more. Let's do like Pong, uh, Pong uh, independent block movement. That's going to feel nice. And let's do like space invaders uh, getting faster <laughs> as time moves. And, uh, and let's do like also Pong. Um, let's do a Pong influence the ball speed. Yeah, so these are some of the ideas that we're going to do. I'm not sure we're going to do all of them today or this time around because we also we can do like a polish pass later. But we're going to just going to start playing around and making the game feel nicer. So the first thing I want to do is the squash and stretch, right, uh, for the player, when we move the player, okay? 
uh, if you check out my other game, the one that we benchmarked as like the base game that we wanted to make at least as good as, uh, you can see that when you move the player, there's a nice squash and stretching going on. And like if you collide, kind of a pops back. And because this is keyboard input, you can see a little deceleration when I stopped, you know, adding, when I stopped accelerating him. That you can't do because of the mouse. So I'm going to try to do a little bit more different this time. So the basic version we could do is just basically get the velocity and then influence the scale, both uh, vertically and horizontally. That's what I did in this case. But I'm going to try to do something more interesting this time. I am going to add, let's see, we have the player key. I'm going to add like a, a player uh, visual P and player visual DP. Okay, and I want to uh, I want the visual part of the player to be sort of like a a spring thing. So let me quickly draw that just so you guys understand the basic idea. So if I am here and I move here and I stop immediately, what I should do is something like this. <laughs> so that's the basic idea. Right. For now, we're going to render a different guy just so we can uh, see the difference. Like, uh, let's see, player P, where's that? This guy. Let's draw a different player P. And we'll do with the, let's add the player visual P to like a uh, zero 10 guy just so we can. Uh, we're just going to see something. And let's make him yellow. So it should be zero zero. Yeah. Oh, he yellows too. Similar. Let's make him uh, let's make it blue. I don't think we've ever do like a full blue guy. Okay, so first of all, let's make him uh, follow our guy. So we have the player desired P, right? Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, dpx. Yeah, so let's make our player visual p. Well, we could just set that to the player desired p. We could do that as the first version. So, see, that's the first version. Now, what we want to do is we want to accelerate. So, we're going to add like a. Uh, I can do like a player movement. Thing here, then we can do like player visual DDP. So we're going to accelerate the player. Uh, let's start out as a big zero guy. And first of all, let's just focus on the X. I think we're only going to focus on the X. The other one we can pretty much straight up copy from the other guy. So the X is going to be. Uh, Let's say we want to continuously go to this position, right? So we have uh, like a target position and a desired position. So this one is the desired position, uh, target position, right? And we are at the player visual P, okay? So this is our desired position, uh, our target, uh, our current position. So current. And we can also do like a multiplier for this guy. We do like 10 times this guy. That'll be the acceleration. And then we can do like the, the normal movement, uh, basic movement equation, which is the acceleration. Uh, I think we did that before. The acceleration uh, times the dt squared times half plus, so I'm going to do like the add v2 player uh, visual P plus the player visual DP. Okay, and then we can also do the player uh, visual DP, which is going to be I'm going to add the old one, player visual DP to the multiplication of the player visual DDP times DT this time, 
no need to square it. Okay, and we should also like set the initial guys uh, to a few arguments for add v2. Um, illegal for struct. So I can do like this one here. Player desired p undeclared. Yeah, desired p you should do. Um, should like this. Okay. Now, uh, hey man, abx. I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we are starting to get somewhere. Let's just not do this. Dude! Is that awesome or what? So the problem is we have no damping. So we are like a frictionless, infinite, dampless spring. Wow, that's a cool adjectives. <laughs> so what we want to do here is like the faster we are in one direction, we want to pull harder to the other direction. So we're going to add, let's put like another coefficient, let's do like half. The same thing, but for the dp, and the desired dp is zero, so we want to be static, right? And the current dp, that's this guy. So that's the basic idea. You know, we should. Uh, Uh, let's do like really strong just to make sure. Yeah. Dude! Talking about game feel, that's gonna feel so awesome. I, I'm going to add like a lot of damping. Yeah, but I'm also going to increase this guy a lot. Okay, this is kind of good. Maybe decrease the damping a bit. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but I can certainly feel the difference. Uh, whenever I... Uh, Okay, dude, this is awesome. And the the visual P I should just uh, set it to like the desired uh, P. Y is going to be this guy. Yeah. So we got we got this. Dude, this is so much cooler. I think you guys can see that. So much cooler to control. This is like a cool, crazy jelly, man. Now, if we start playing around with the size on top of that, that's gonna be way cooler. Yeah, so I, I don't think I'm gonna do all of these. I think I'm gonna clean up this a lot. So we're not going to have both. We're going to have the target position, which is the green guy. And we'll have the desired position, which is this guy. Uh, okay, so let's do um, player half size right dot x is going to be equal to player dp dot x. Let's just see what the base uh, half size is. Let's say player half size um, it's 10 2 so let's do like 10 plus this guy which should go well let's use our print shall we now that we do have a print system that we implemented last time well so far it's just print int so we're gonna have to hack that a little bit but that'll be okay so let's see from int to float. Let's see what we have in terms of speed. 
Uh, yeah, we don't have negative. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> we definitely have to, to improve that. But let's just like a EBS. F. For the absolute value. Just so you can see it like a number. Uh, and actually, I'm not sure if we have like a huge number or not. So we're going to do like 82 or maybe 80. Yeah, so we have huge numbers. So let's see. I think it's like uh, we multiplied by 100, right? So let's not multiply it by 100. Let's see, like the pure number. Okay, so we go up to 1,000 if we are super, super, uh, super fast. So let's see if in the 1,000 uh, scenario you want to be twice as fast. So this is going to be plus this guy divided by a 100, then, which is like, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should really just be the absolute, just like we did last time. Yeah. Dude, that's that's like motion blur stuff. That's super cool. But what, you know what I'm gonna do instead of using the player, I'm gonna use the visual DP. Well I don't think that changed anything. Yeah, maybe this guy is too much. Let's do it like this. Mm. The visual DP is the acceleration to match the other guy. So ah, not sure though. Yeah, it's too much, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to use, like, this guy. Okay, now, for the y, it's going to start off as 2, then we're going to do, like, minus, um, yeah, maybe it's going to be too thin, but let's see. Yeah, way, way too thin. Oh, yeah, we're, um... Dude, this is so much better. You guys have no idea. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit too thin still. But this is like the coolest thing ever in terms of like the game. Ah, oh, uh, the blue guy is so much fun to control. So jelly and stuff. And that motion blur looks awesome. Okay, really, really, really cool stuff. Now, I'm going to clean up a lot of things that we were messing up. So we don't need, we don't need, uh, well, first of all, we need to draw the, the other guy, right? So the player, uh, let's call this guy the player target P. Yeah, let's change player P to player target P. So this is the target position. And, uh, well, you know what? I, I probably have to go like one by one just to make sure that I know what I'm changing. So calculate speed adjustment for the ball this is the playground, this, this one doesn't matter because it's the same. Maybe I should just split them then. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna do that. I'm going to do like the player PY 
which is fixed, the player target p x. Okay. The player visual p and the player visual e p. So this one's going to be the player p later on. But so this guy is just the player uh, p y. Spawn triple shot. I'm going to use the player. Yeah, this one I'm going to keep player px, which is going to be like the damped p. And maybe I should do the same with the py. So player py. Oh, I can pretty much just do like do it like this. Yeah. Maybe it's going to break the things. Player visual p. So this is just the player P. Um, yeah. And this is going to be the desired PX. Like player target PX. Oh, we do have the desired P, so... Mm. Yeah, no, this is going to be the desired P dot X. And the desired P... Well, not entirely sure this is correct. Well, no, let, let's... Let's keep the... Let's keep two of them for now, and let's see what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, we're going to make the collision be with the visual P first. So, uh, yeah, let's change this guy. Then, calculate speed adjustment. Let's make it the visual P. And then we can change the visual P back to the other guy. That'll be better. Uh, triple shot, visual P. Uh, yeah, triple shot, visual P. Start game. This one's gonna be this P. Stadium. Um, uh, it doesn't even matter. They'll, they'll be the same. Okay, simulate block for, le uh, for level. Yeah, it doesn't even matter either. Because the Y is the same. Okay, play movement. So this is the complicated stuff. I mean, we have to do this guy. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't that complicated. The desired P is this guy. And the visual P is going to just be a straight copy. Update ball. So if it's colliding with the visual P of the player, okay. Yeah. Um, then we should check out the visual P as well as this guy. If it's colliding, oh yeah, now it's block. This is yeah, colliding with the power ups. Same thing, visual P. Um, this guy is going to be the player render. So, I'm going, yeah, the desired, oh, no, this is the player spring. No, this is the player render. So, the DPX is how much we moved last frame. Yeah, okay. And uh, we're going to set the visual P. Yeah, okay, let's see what we have. So we are. Yeah, now we can remove 
this guy. I think I'm gonna make this spring. I'll call that, uh, I don't remember right. A minus target. Target P. Uh, simulate, uh, play movement. Movement. Yeah. I'll call that here spring, like. Okay, so the spring, I'm gonna make the damping a little bit less. Like 30. Nah, I'm not sure. Nah, it's, a, it's too much, it's too twitchy. Yeah. Keep that for you, let's see. Okay. Okay, that's better. So this player P, we're gonna call that target P, player target P, and then player target DP. So target P, yeah, I can pretty much just copy that player, player P, and player target. Player DP in the player target DP. Are we even using the, the uh, player target DP? Oh, we are. Yeah, we are to get the spring motion. Okay. Now, nothing changed. Um, yeah, let's just do a little bit more cleanup. So we have the player target P and the target DP half size, the light. The visual P and the visual DP. I think that's okay. So we did the squash and stretching. Oh, let, let's do like the player collision. Player collision. This is gonna be a little bit better work. A little bit uh, too much work, I think, because it's hard to get 100% right. So let's just do something fun. Let's do the ball tray first. So the ball tray, we want the tray for the ball, right? Easy enough. What we're gonna do, uh, like we have the ball, let's see. Yeah. Hmm. Each ball has a trail. So inside, I'm gonna do like, struct uh, type def ball trail. All we're gonna have now is a P and a life. So for every ball, I'm gonna have a few ball trays. Let's add like eight for now. And then uh, yeah, next ball trail. Ball trail ball. Oh, let's just call that trails. Okay, so what we could do when we render balls, we just could, uh, after we set the position, we could add a new trail. Right? Ball trail trail equals ball trails plus ball um, next. Trail, next ball trail. Oh, let's do like just next. Let's do like just next trail. Okay. Next trail, plus plus. If next trail is greater or equal than array count, we did that a lot. Ball uh, trails. Next trail is zero. So it's a circular buffer. We did that a lot. Uh, ball next trail is zero. 
gonna set the trail p to be the ball p. I'm gonna set the trail um is it life? Uh, let's go. Yeah, it is life. Life. Let's set that. Let's set that to one. So let's draw the, the trails first. And we should also draw that properly before everybody else. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter. So for int i equals 0, i less than array count ball trails i plus plus ball trail plus equals i so if trail life is greater uh, is less than or equal to zero continue then we're going to set the life minus the dt then we're going to set the tra uh, we're going to draw the trail right so Yeah, this is like old stuff. I'm gonna keep it for now. But that's old stuff. We're going to add like alpha to our colors, but uh, for now, let's do like a white trail. Okay, but this is the trail P and the. Uh, yeah, let's use the ball half size. Trail. Next trail. Uh, ball next trail. Highest preview local declaration. Yeah, we can call that no trail actually. We're not going to do that every frame, as you guys will see. We're probably not going to see anything. Oh, we do see. Dude, that, that's cool enough already. Yeah, the thing is, this is frame rate dependent. So if you are running pretty slowly, I, I can make like, oh, I can't make full screen now. Oh, and I can't even change the size because of the mouse lock stuff. Oh, that sucks. Um, let's try to hack that in. So, let's make it like, a, let's make it a super small screen. Let's make it like 720 by 720 divided by 16 times 9. So, we pretty much can't see a trail, right? Okay, that's fair enough. Now, let's do a bigger screen and we'll probably see a longer trail, is that correct? Yes, this is correct, because since we have fewer frames, uh, this difference in the trail is bigger, so we don't want to spawn. Now let's do a. Uh, now let's let's just keep it that for now. We're not going to spawn every frame in the ball. We're going to see like a, a trail timer. So ball trail t trail spawner t. We're going to make that less than. Yeah, we also don't need the life. Yeah, we are going to visually change it, so yeah. Hello, what does for each ball does? The for each ball is just a, uh, a macro that uh, is a for, and I go through all the balls in the game by pointer. Yeah, just to have, as I had to type that a lot, and I decided, okay, let's just make a quick macro for that. Uh, okay, so the the we subtract the trail spawner and if the trail spawner let's say one every 
a tenth of a second. So if it's zero, actually, if it's zero, we are going to spawn a new trail. Oh, this is wrong. Um, this should be like here. Yeah. We should, we're going to spawn a new trail if this guy is zero. If it's less than or equal to zero. And then we're going to increase that by uh, 0 0.1. Yeah, I think I think that's that's good for now. Yeah, and then we have to create the trail spawner T. Yeah. So now it should be frame rate independent. Yeah. But as you can see, it's not nearly as frequent as we need. But the size of the tray is pretty cool. It's going to be nice. Now let's try the small screen again to see if we still see these guys. Um, they were like 720. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. It's the same thing. Although, our damping is not the same thing. Yeah. So this one is correct. But our spring is not correct. I probably missed a DP multiply somewhere. The DP... Oh yeah, here. It's the... Yeah. It's going to multiply the DP times the DT and the DDP times the dt squared divided by 2. Okay, so we're back. Our normal... Oh, now we're stuck. Oh, we're not stuck. We're super slow. Dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we have to tweak those values again. Now, dude, now we're like... Yeah, let's, let's take this damping out. Let's go back to make that Hmm. This is gonna be tough to tweak. You know what? In the draw player, player render, I'm going to draw the player target P. Same thing we did. Uh, I'm gonna do that. Just so we can uh, tweak this value again. Yeah. See, this delay, we don't want that. So, spring. Let's make this guy, like, really stronger. So this pretty much should be stuck. Yeah. But now, let's remove a little bit of the dam. Okay. It's starting to get better. Hmm. Nah. Oh, I thought we had a nice value there. We're not going to stick so much. Okay. This is better. But uh, add more damage. Okay, not so much damping. 35. Those value tweakings are not the most fun thing ever. Okay, I kind of, kind of like that. I kind of liked that. Okay. Yeah, it's not a hundred percent. You know what? I think I'm gonna keep this guy for a while. Um, yeah, just gonna tweak these values a little bit more. It's gonna make this guy stronger. 
Okay, I think I think that's that's good enough. You know what? Maybe we can keep them both. Let's see. Let's see if I manage to print anything. I think I'm gonna keep them both because that's gonna work as a trail. Oh, but we have to fix the collision for that as well. Hmm. Let's just see visually what happens if we put them in the same color, which is like this. Kind of like that. Let's remove this one just for reference. Yeah, but this is, uh, I don't know, this feels a little bit better. Yeah, the other one is prettier. But this one feels more responsive. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to remove this guy. Okay, now back to the trail. So first things we see is that 0 0.1 is not a lot. That's like 0 0.01. Okay, so this is better. Still not 100%, but I think that will be enough. So we probably have to add like a lot more trail guys. And in uh, life, let's just not... Let's just not disconsider because of the life. So we see like the full trail. Is the right C++ in our daily job? Uh, it depends. My daily job is basically I solve problems using programming. So some, sometimes I use C++, I use C. Sometimes I use like weird scripting stuff that I really don't like. Sometimes I do web stuff. There's not, not a rule. I don't have like a fixed job. I just kind of get, get a... See what opportunities I have to solve problems with programming. Random stuff, not game related. Okay, so... That, that was pretty cool, I think. But we're not dense enough. We are going to add... Uh, we are going to add, let's see, the rotation later on. So this is going to be better. But considering a frame is this long, oh, it's not actually. Hmm. So we're going, we're going to have to do some more interesting stuff with that when we when we lock our frame rate. that's pretty cool you know the faster we go the longer the, the trail hmm. okay yeah okay this is starting to be nice uh, okay so PHP ah not really PHP I haven't used PHP for like a long time Okay, now let's make the trail softer. Uh, how are we going to do that? Our render, oh, and go back to the live system. Have to tweak that. Our render doesn't support alpha values. So we're going to have to change that. So we have a draw rect in pixels. We're going to have to do like a draw uh, rect in pixels alpha. Like trans draw transparent rect in pixels. Okay, now instead of just setting the color straight up here, I'm going to do a lerp. Do we have a lerp? I don't think we do. I'm going to do a lerp color. This is the target color. This is the A color and uh, alpha. Okay. Yeah, I think that's correct. We could optimize this later. And uh, yeah, maybe like curse. Uh, but we're not gonna have that much alpha, guys. So color and alpha. Lerp color. Yeah, I think we have lerp, but not lerp color. 
let's go to math learn yeah So lerp color will take u32 a ft u32 b and then we're probably going to have to lerp every guy correct yeah so like rt uh let's say r yeah t for target the target is i just like a r it's going to be a masked with this guy shift I'm not sure how slow this is gonna be we have to profile that later uh, masked by this guy shifted by uh, right shifted by 16 okay so Shifted by eight, and uh, a b is going to be a masked with this guy. That's it. Okay, so a will be b. Okay. Now we're going to return a make color. with lerp u8 right yeah ar um t br okay so this is going to be g this is going to be b and i don't think we have a lerp u8 I think we can just like, um, yeah, we'll do Earth, U8, F32, U8, Lerp redefinition, Lerp U8. Okay, conversion from F32 to U8, possible loss of data. Oh, because. Yeah. This guy should still be at 32. How am I supposed to do that? Am I supposed to come to do the lerp in F32 and then yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Not going to do the lerp in U8. But I am going to, you know, straight up cast to U8 afterwards. So... Yeah. This is like really bad. They should have floating point colors. I'm gonna put that in the to-do for engine rotated racks uh, floating point colors yeah because this is like trying to hack a lot of stuff conversion from uh, return okay yeah turn so turn this guy initialize conversion from u32 to u8 Oh, we, yeah, so I might as well cast that to F32 here. So F32 and these guys, these guys, the F32s. Then I have to cast anyways. Wow, that that's really a lot of code editing. Like code as text, not code as things to make the game work yeah I have to add one more this guy no, not in this case okay let's see oh we have to yeah so that was the first part draw transparent rect in pixels now in the draw rect 
we should have a drive transparent direct that takes an alpha and then calls the draw transparent direct pixels and in the game when we the the trail let's do trails render balls I'm gonna render the trails call that render trails we're going to do draw uh, transparent we're really close and then we're gonna pass the trail life that is it now Undefined trans draw transparent direct. I must have typoed something. Oh, yeah. Um, trans, yeah, okay, so this one is. Wrong. And then we're gonna pass alpha. Alpha, okay. Now let's see what we have. Well, nothing apparently. Let's do a little bit more controlled experiment. In the game, when we draw the player, let's do a draw transparency act and pass half. Well, let's pass zero. Yeah, so zero is transparent. Half. Okay, so our uh, transparent render works. Nice. Uh, so the problem is not our render. It is, though, the trails. Yes, trail life. I think I have to multiply that by a bigger number, like 10, because we didn't actually see any difference. This is a bit weird. Let me print so we can analyze the frame. Okay, this is starting to look pretty cool. Um, okay, so when it's zero or less than zero, it's glitched out. And it's taking a long time to get to, to be transparent. Hmm. Yeah, let's do like this so we don't pass negative numbers. And yeah, 10 was too much. Let's do 2. How's that look? If we do like 0 0.2, we should probably not see them fade. Yeah. We can do like a little bit of math. So we spawn one for every, you know, 0 0.001 seconds. And we have that array size. So Let's call that, uh, let's do 0 0.001f times the array count for the ball. That should be a constant, really, but who cares for now? Ball trails. Okay, so I did nothing. Uh, oh, actually, this should just be the DT. Yeah. And this one I should calculate like this. I think it's going to be easier to understand. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting a nice result. Not sure we have a correct result though, but it's pretty cool.
Let's see if we can see that on print. Oh, I didn't, didn't actually print the screen. Okay. Uh, but you know what? The life should be one. Yeah. <laughs> so the life should be one because we want like fully transparent in the start, in the beginning, or not. Yeah, but we can play around with that. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I maybe we can just keep them like that for now. Oh, not like that. Okay, this is a bit better. Yeah, but instead of white, now we can do, do like the uh, normal ball color thing. Yeah, okay. When we get rotated rects, this is gonna look better. But, yeah, see. Maybe we should do like, you know, 77, a little bit wider. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely play around with that a little bit more. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Now let's see what else we can do. Ball trade, player collision. Yeah, that's... This has been a long time coming, so... <laughs> we want to stop the player at this. This sounds easy, but there'll be a few complications, I think. Um, yeah, we can also do like a lot of stuff here, like make animation, like block destroyed animation, make start level animation. Maybe you can like reduce that a lot now. Uh, like how much was that? Do like sixty four. Let's see. Dude, that's pretty cool. But no, let's do actually more. Now nah, that was too much. And maybe, maybe the ball, the actual ball should be white, and these guys should be cyan. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, yeah. Starting to be like 100% better. Just a bog trail, that was... Let's see if you can get like a lot of action going on. Well, apparently I can't. Yeah, I see that. Let me, let me be invincible for a while, just so I can... I um, almost got it. Let's see. Dude. Okay, I think we're gonna give up. Yeah, well. Okay. Um, now, the player collision. Yeah. We have the desired P for the player. 
you like movement. Like player movement. Yeah. Thirds are P. We just straight up do the calculations and set the desired P. Oh, it is one frame behind, I think. Yeah, well, it's not such a big a deal, I think. Because it is supposed to be, you know, laggy, but we can, we can do like the game robustness pass. Game. Uh, Frame creates a one frame la movement lag. Okay, let's go back to the player movement. Okay, so this is pretty easy. Like, if the player, oh, that's the basic idea, right? Desired P is less than, let's do minus arena half size dot x plus the players half size dot x if that's the case the player um, desired p is going to be equal to that well let's see So this is the yeah that's that's why I said this was going to be complicated. The basic idea is this, but they're not basic anymore. <laughs> this is C. <laughs> what a bad joke. <laughs> we're not doing basic anymore. Okay, so hmm. and we can still get out get off the screen. Where are we? Let's do like print int player desired p dot x. Dude, have to do negative numbers quickly. You know what? I'm gonna do that because this turned out to be enough of a headache in our draw number like if number is less than zero number times equals minus one and then I have to draw like let's get the eight have a little dash like this Half square size. Yeah, but this is not the correct position. Mm, since we move them left, we should actually that's like delicate delay that like draw minus. Okay. And at the very end, if we are supposed to draw minus, well, we draw the minus. Okay, now this is nice, but we're drawing a square. Let's make like times two. Okay, just wanted to not crash when we had the minus guy. This looks, this looks good, I think. So this is kind of correct. The spring is all crazy, but if we if we go crazy, first of all we crashed. Second of all, 
Yeah, it was a huge desire to pee. Maybe, maybe we're gonna cap that. Remember that we capped, and that was a bug last time around. Let's do the capping here. So, uh, this player DP to world. Let's draw this guy. Let's draw this guy. So, this guy. Just to see the, its range. Yeah, so it goes from 2. If we're super fast, it goes like 10. But we want to be able to go fast. Let's try capping that at 10 and minus 10. So uh, let's call that DT, DP, yeah, let's call it world DP, uh, mouse world DP. It's going to be this guy, mouse world DP, mouse world DP. Yeah, but this one we're going to clamp that. Let's say we clamp that at minus 10 and 10. Clamp F. Okay, this is better. This is wrong, but this is like pretty sweet, I think. Yeah, let's just fix this guy. Shouldn't be shouldn't be too hard, I think, to get a little bit better. They don't get incrementally better. Okay, so when we do the let's call that player wall collision. If we do collide with the wall. We might as well set, let's try setting the player target dp.x to zero. Don't know if that's going to be like too much, but let's see. Uh, this, that, yeah, let's say what, what this takes into account the player target p which is last frames frames p this is last frames p so this is the problem oh oh no it's the dpy I got that wrong we use the desired p so I don't think we are one frame behind. Mm. The target P the desired P no the, yeah, this is not it does not. Okay. So that mystery was solved. Now, we are still doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Maybe we should also remove the visual DP. And uh, just for the record, we may want a little bit of a ricochet of the wall. Maybe a little bit, but not, not this much. So, wow, this, <laughs> now we're snapping to the wall. That's not, that's not cool. Uh, oh, yeah, we are using the player visual DP. Hmm. We're setting the target DP. Maybe we should set the desired. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're setting the desired P and the des desired target DP. 
See why I said this collision thing was going to be a little bit of a headache. I'm going to turn back that uh, this guy again. Like the blue guy, which is the target blue. And let's just actually not even draw our green guy. Okay. Yeah, so the target P is wrong. So we can start with that. Target P equals the desired P. Oh, but uh, yeah. So the thing is the design P. So let's. We should like debug this, but we can do it, like in the code first. So we set that to how much we want to go. Then we're going to cap that at the arena half size X plus the player half size X. So this is just a visual, we don't care about that for now. For each ball, ball desired P, we should choose like player desired P. So player, and then we render. Hmm. Not sure who's messing with that. So I suppose now it's debugging time. Okay, now. Um, let's go to the simulate game, and then we're going to put a breakpoint here. Okay, so the desired P is minus 56, but we should actually be capped at minus 52. Okay, sounds good enough. So now we set that to minus 52, dp to 0. Okay, it doesn't matter that we're setting the dp to 0. Yeah, but I, yeah. Okay, let's go step by step now. We could put a data breakpoint in this guy. And I'm also in the, the I'm going to run the game until we start drawing him. Like this. Yeah, so nobody changed. Oh, we did ch no. Um no, it's still minus 52. Okay. Now the target P is this guy. Then we're drawing the target P. Can we check out what this looks like? So this is what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to complain too much. Yeah, maybe the, the thing is just the uh, size calculation. Uh, yeah, because the size is a spring, right? So we hit a break point. Data breakpoint, where is that? On GDI? Okay. Let's see, now it's minus 62. And then we kept that at minus 62? Yeah, because we are smaller. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to debug using our print system. So print int player target x. Yeah, I'm not going to I don't think I'm gonna to get too stuck with this. Yeah, see the problem is the size. 
So I think, yeah. Yeah, ju just to clarify what the problem is. The first frame, let's say we collide like this because we, we move super fast. So the next frame, we are here and we can go a little bit more. So we do. So we, it goes like this. So we go from here to here. So, so the size is smaller. But next frame. No, you know what? No, yeah, yeah, okay. So we're going like from this to here and we stop like this. So next time we can go a lot more. But it still doesn't explain why we go the other way. I guess the other way. Yeah, we don't go the other way. Yeah. Hmm. Draw. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let me just close this paint. What I'm going to do is not consider the player half size when we do the collision. And we're going to hard code 10. Oh, let's do like base player half size. equals 10. So we hard code this to avoid the size changes to make the collision view not solid. That was a bad description. Okay, so Looks nice. Yeah. This is what we wanted. This is perfect. And we do go a little bit to the side. Let's see how it looks in the uh, the spring version of the guy. May look a little bit weird. Yeah. Maybe I think it's a bit too much springy. Yeah, so uh, let's just... I'm going to keep playing around with these values until the game releases. Yeah, I think this is bad. So, but, but you guys saw the problem, right? Uh, the problem was... Okay, I wanted to see the, the time. Uh, okay, so the problem was we go a little bit inside these guys. I think I'm gonna hack that pretty ugly, ugly, -ly. hmm. Like uh, this is the player light. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm going to clear screen. Uh, clear arena screen. Yeah, I'm going to split this function in two. The clear screen. So we are uh, gonna split the clear screen. So we actually do. First, this guy, and then the other guy. So we're going to do clear arena screen, and then draw arena racks. Let's do something. Yeah, I think it's going to be better. So, 
first of all, we just do the clear. Actually, this is the other way around. So, uh, clear screen should be the initial rect, which is the clear, which is the uh, this guy. This guy. Okay, which is the clear, the first color. So first we clear that with the first color, and then we're going to call the draw arena rect. We don't need a position. So. We can you know, do a bit better than this. So when we clear, we we don't need that. It's gonna be zero. Oh yeah, we. Hmm. No, we don't. Well, I'm gonna keep that because we may want to do. We may want to use that when you do camera and things like that. Okay. So that's all we want to do for this guy. So yeah. For the other guy, we don't want to do this one. All we want to do is this one. So we do clear. And now, well, it should should nothing nothing should have changed, and it did. Um. Yeah, I, I got these guys wrong. Oh, okay, yeah. So actually, this one's the one we want to keep. These two guys. Which is like, so we're going to start out this guy. Go all the way. I'm going to start out at this guy. Go all the way to the other guy. Then I'm going to start at zero and go to Y1. Draw arena rights to a few arguments. Okay, so this one I think is correct. And this one we don't need these guys. So we draw the two bars and the, the one on top. Okay, I think this looks nice. If you guys have any questions, just drop them in the chat and I'll try to answer them. Uh, okay, so nothing changed. Now what we're going to do is do the, this guy after we draw the player. So we're going to pretty much clip him. This is like, this is like a hack. But yeah. Cool. Now what we are going to do is make the player a little bit taller when it, when it uh, compresses. So now this is going to be the uh, we stretch. This is going to be the squashing part. Well, no, just, well, it's going to be the squashing stretching again. Then uh, in the player movement, player collision with the wall, we set the player half size. Y to this. I'm also going to add another uh, thing here. So we start out with two plus the speed. So if you're super fast, we're super thin. Now, if we are, if our rightmost position, yeah, is in this side of the wall. So let's let's do that. So if our rightmost position, which is player target P plus uh, player half size. We're doing the X thing here. So, okay, so if this guy, let's subtract the, uh, the rightmost thing, which is this guy. This guy is the rightmost thing. So 
I have to make that more clear later on, but for now, let's just do like this. So this guy is the diff. You know what? I think I'm going to print that. I feel like printing a lot of stuff today. <laughs> After all, we did add that system. Did we not? Conversion from... Okay. Now, this should be... Uh... I think we got it wrong. That guy minus this guy. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. Ten. Hmm. I, I was expecting zero, honestly, because the target P plus the player half size. Well, let's do it like this. If this guy, call it that guy. If guy is greater than 10. Yeah, okay. So, okay, this is nice. So, the if it's actually greater than, so yeah, let's do like F32, let's call that, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know what, how to say that in English, I'm going to translate that. Espremer in Portuguese. I think it's pretty much just, just like squashing. Squeeze. Yeah, squeeze is the correct word. So this is the squeeze factor. Squeeze factor. Okay, so if the squeeze factor, we should like do squeeze factor. Uh, yeah, if the squeeze factor is greater then the base... What did you call that? Base player hex size X. Then we print. Guy, okay, we're going to print the squeeze factor. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Now, just for kicks, we are going to increase the player half size here. By the squeeze factor. Okay, that's like not what we wanted at all. Should like when we try to squeeze. And so this is, I think this is wrong. So the thing is, if we do collide, we should do something here. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. If we do collide, uh, let's call that leftmost position. Let's move P. Now I think this is clear. Leftmost P. Uh, okay, now. The di difference between our desired P and the leftmost position, right? Yeah. Should be the squeezing factor. Squeeze factor. So. Yeah, this is all wrong, I think. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's 
squeeze factor equals zero. And then okay. Let's try multiplying that by a big number. Well, maybe a hundred is too much. But just so we can see, we're gonna do like slowly. Uh, yeah, we did that in the wrong guy. We're testing. Yeah. Okay. Let's do them both. Left, right. This guy is rightmost p. This guy should be the rightmost p. And this guy is the rightmost p. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna be too much. Dude, come on! Uh, the play desired px. Okay, now this is like yeah. Let me draw that. This is here. This is like minus ten. This is like minus five. We are doing this guy plus five. We have minus five. Yeah. Well, I suppose this is correct, except it's the other way around, which is negative. But. Don't see how this should be wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna add a breakpoint here. If we are more than the rightmost p. Let's see the squeeze factor. It's negative. Okay, the desired p is 76. Right, must be 75. So the one minus the other one. So, yeah, this one is correct and this one is minus. Yeah, oh, okay, I draw that correctly, but I, yeah, apparently I, I couldn't write the proper code. Okay. Okay, that's what we want. Kinda. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, this is like way too much, but I think we are getting somewhere. We also have to make us get inside a little bit of the wall, like, yeah. So this guy is going to be minus the squeeze factor. And we also have to move him by the squeeze factor. So the desired P is the rightmost P plus the squeeze factor, divided by 2, I suppose. Okay. Now, let's see. Uh, maybe not divided by 2? I was thinking that because we are adding that the half size. Hmm. But in any case, it's not such a big deal to, you know, uh, go a little bit overboard because now visually we're clipping. So, okay, <laughs> we're not clipping, we're just <laughs> join the other guy on top. Okay, this is starting to look nice. I think I can add a little bit more squeeze factor. <laughs> Dude, this is this is cool now. Okay, but this is not correct. This is starting to get cool. We should be more. Hmm. Minus the squeeze factor. Okay. Hmm. 
actually we should just like we shouldn't do it in the frame that we hit. Hmm. I don't know if you guys could see the problem, that was pretty fast. Well, what we do is now. Well, yeah. Maybe, well, let's see. Okay, I think I got a pretty good frame. Yeah, so we don't want that case. But why did that happen? Why did that happen? I mean, if we add the squeeze factor, This should only happen in the kit in the frame that we hit. And if we hit, we moved the, de the desired P. Oh, but we don't, yeah. How long have you been coding? You mean this game or like in my life? This game, you can go to my YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash danzaydan, and you can watch the whole thing. I stream the whole thing. You can watch from the very first episode, started out with nothing. We didn't use any libraries, just a blank file. Then every line of code you can see uh, in my life. Well, in my life, I don't know. I started casually coding when I was, I don't know, 13. Maybe, maybe a little bit younger than that. I used I did some like animations in Flash, so I did like go to this frame and uh, when you press this button, do that. That was the first thing I programmed. Then I tried to learn C at that point, but I couldn't. <laughs> so I, I just focused on more of the art side. So I spent a long time doing like three D art, visual effects, things like that, just for fun, just to learn. And then when I decided to do like a big commercial game. You can see this is the big commercial game I released for the PC and the PS4. It's called Iliosis Hunt. You guys can check them it out on uh, Steam. Th this game, I actually learned how to program, let's put it that way, using a Unreal Engine and visual programming. So I connected nodes, things like that. that and I released that in 2017. But I didn't actually know how to program at that point. I was just hacking things together, man. Really. So after we released the game, I realized that I didn't know what to do, what I was doing. So I took like a full year to study really heavily. So it was like, yeah, let's say a little bit less than a year. Let's say from November 2017 to like July 2018. Then I really studied a lot of programming. So I'd say I've been programming f for real for like almost two years, a little bit less than two years. Uh, it's, it's incredible how much you know you uh, can improve if you really put your will to it. Uh, don't call me late for dinner. What editor are you using? This is for Coder, text editor. Pretty cool, pretty cool text editor. I really like it. Uh, but I'm uh, debugging and uh, running the game on Visual Studio, but I'm just not using it to edit. So yeah, for coder, pretty cool. Uh, so we were, we had this, this uh, problem where we do have one frame of delay here, the squeeze factor. Because uh, the target piece is, is that, but we don't move that immediately to that point. Right, so the thing is, let me let me show you what I mean. If I remove this guy, which is the spring version, uh, this should yeah, this should be perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. <laughs> this is pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, but the this version, which is our 
spring version, there's the delay. Not a delay, there's a lag. Because it's a spring. So imagine a, this guy is the target one. So it moves like all the way to this side. This one doesn't snap. Kind of a, goes like this and then goes a little bit over like this. So we kind of have to consider that for the size, I suppose. At least the squeeze factor. So we should like add a damping to the squeeze factor as well. Hmm. Yeah. Let's do that. Player target whatever. We're going to add player squeeze factor P and player squeeze factor DP. When we do that, we are adding a squeeze. You know what? Kind of thinking whether or not we should spend the time with that. Oh, well, let's do it. Let's do it. No, ah, uh, let's not do it. <laughs> we can do that later on. <laughs> but yeah, this is like more detailed stuff. So we're gonna put like a note here. Um, space invaders. Let's do like make the squeeze factor also consider also uh, have the spring look so we don't have a sp uh, not sp uh, yeah not not have a squeeze factor acting too early Maybe we should just add a size DP. I think that's going to be the best call. Okay. Um, let's see where we are at. Okay, it's starting to get better. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, this is pretty cool. Let's see what else we can do. We can play around with the colors. And make the wall move. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Let's make the walls move. <laughs> the idea is when we hit a wall like this, it moves ever so slightly. Yeah. So instead of having an arena half size, well, we should have an arena half size for the base, right? Because we need that like a lot. Like we have to get the middle point, things like that, and the collision. Yeah. So I'm gonna have like a uh, arena left wall visual P and the right wall visual P. So and we also should add a DP. Yeah, arena half size. When we start the game, set the arena left wall visual DP to minus arena half size dot x, and the right wall is this. And we set the yeah, this should be the P. We set the DP to zero. We should also do like a top wall. Let's first do the, the other ones. Okay, this is only going to be considered when we draw. So I think I can just remove a lot of these calls that we did in the software rendering. We don't need all that stuff. All we need now 
is to draw a rect which is this guy and uh, this guy I'm going to draw a rect well no actually this is wrong I still well I don't need I don't need this guy can be the draw rect well not really because uh, if we do that we break in the case that we are not like correct in terms of like screen position stuff I can't test that anymore because of the mouse lock thing we did but it's basically the uh, it's basically the, the the position changes based on the the size like super wide aspect ratio that was the, what I was looking for okay but we're going to change this guy so uh, here drawing a rect we're going to take the arena half size we should actually take instead of the uh, rect, instead of taking the half size we should just change each one individually. So we have this guy as the uh, uh, like left most and this is the right most. Let's call that half size x, y and then we do like the left most and the right most. Okay, then we do like the half size y times this guy. Then we do the leftmost and the rightmost. Okay. okay, so this is going to be the arena left, arena right. This guy down next. So we shouldn't see any difference, I hope. And we do. Okay, let's break at this point. Rightmost is zero. Why is it zero? I thought we initialized these guys. Now, arena left what no this yeah okay so that was weird but I think now it's correct <laughs> I kind of thought something else was wrong. okay this is wrong this is wrong dude what's going on start game Minus 84, minus 85, and 85. Let's add a couple of data breakpoints. Hmm. Maybe we're passing the wrong values. Arena left. Yeah, we are passing the DP. You guys should have caught that on chat. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to throw the responsibility onto you guys, but just saying, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. Well, I think we are more correct. Let's see, 84. Okay, this is nice. Okay, so now we don't need to do 
this guy because it's already negative. Not working yet. Left mouse, 85. Now it's like, yeah, the pixel thing. Okay, I see the problem. No, I don't. I, I thought I couldn't. I thought, well, I thought I couldn't work on uh, in this space with uh, negative numbers, but I think that's not a problem. So, px minus left most. Well, didn't we compile the code? Oh, I changed the wrong guy. This is the one I should have changed. Yeah. Okay, we are back. Now we should be able to play around with these guys in an interesting way. So, let's do like wall movements. And uh, just for the record, the simulation order is all over the place. But things like wall movement, we don't really care. So I think it's better to be organized than to be like a frame perfect in the wall movement for some reason. But, well, I think we are from perfect, but we're just doing like simulate render, simulate render, simulate render, instead of doing all the simulations and then all the renderings. So we're going to do the arena left visual P. We're going to do a spring on this guy as well. Uh, the P is going to be... Well, let's add, let's do a, a, a DDP. DDP, which is going to be the target position, which is this guy. I'm sorry, this guy. For the left is, is uh, this guy minus the current one, which is this guy. Okay. Yeah, let's start with that. And then we have the arena left wall DP. which is going to be plus equals this guy times the dp and the arena p is the ddp times the dt squared times half plus the dp times dt that's it and we're going to do that for the other guy as well. Uh, the target is actually minus this guy. I don't think, I'm not sure we can do that. Let's try. Oh, okay. Here. Minus dot x. Okay. And this is where it's left, so we do right. F32. Okay, let's see if we are the same. Yeah, we are the same. Now what we should be able to do, now it's the fun part, is it not? We should be able to add uh, the DP, a velocity, when we hit the, let's say, ball, wall, wall, update balls. But if we hit the right side, we should do like an arena, half size, uh, arena right, visual dp, minus equals, I don't know, 20. And we should do the same thing for the left side, but it's going to be plus equals 20. Let's see what we have. Okay, isn't that cool? OK, 
Okay, a couple problems. Uh, we think they are going like like this, but it's a little bit misleading because when we do here in the uh, in the software rendering, when we do the clear screen, we are capping that at the half size x. We should really cap that at the left and the right. So uh, let's call that left most and uh, right most. Same thing we did the other guy in this one can just have size y. Half size y, half size y plus the left most plus the right most. Okay, no need to do that. This one is the y, left most. And uh, right most. And uh, this is an F32. Okay, so right uh, arena, right arena, I'm sorry, it's arena left, arena right, and then we do the Okay, now we should see the, the real thing, which is an undamped spring. What? No, now we're not. We're not actually. We're not actually doing anything now. Um, hmm. Left. Mo yeah, we had to do it like. Plus leftmost, this looks about correct. Um, yeah, let's let's debug that. Let's see what kind of values that we have. Zero. Again, we did the same thing. We passed the DP instead of the P. Same thing. Should have learned the first time. Okay. Well, is that a little glitch? Oh no, that's the breakpoint. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see what we have. Now we should have an undamped spring. See what happens? Now it goes to the other side because it's undamped. So we're going to do the same thing we did uh, last time around we did the spring, which was we have to add a multiplier to this guy, which is like coefficient. Then we have the target dp, which is 0, so 0 minus the current dp, so arena left dp, which will also add a multiplier a coefficient to this guy. Okay? And we did that previously today, so it's the same thing. Um, yeah. Let's see. Dude! That's so cool. And how much work was that? And maybe we should add the... Maybe we're going to, I don't know. Let's add a little bit more of a, a damp. But I'm thinking about doing the player collision with the, these guys. So maybe it's going to push me a little bit. Yeah, it was too, too much. Let's do 10 maybe. Let's do like. No, that was way too much. Oh, I put a hundred here. Let's start combining that. What 
it, I do. Okay, let's go. Um, not sure I like that. Yeah, maybe I should be a little bit less damp. Let's go back to 5 now that we change that to 9. Yeah. But this should be stronger. And uh, this should be a little bit stronger, like 7. And then we should also, like, in the ball, update ball, yeah. Should make this like way stronger. Has to be really snappy to feel good. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, now that's cool. Okay, I think this is looking nice. Maybe it's a bit too much. Yeah, we can play around with these values like forever. But for now, all I'm gonna do, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna change both collisions, ball collision. Yeah, player collision with a player, colli player. here. Instead of doing like the minus arena half size, it's less than arena left most, left wall stuff. Arena right wall. So now the ball will collide. I'm not sure if this is gonna be like a weird behavior. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it was a weird behavior, but I think we are wrong, like before even. Okay. This guy minus half size X should really just be the arena left guy. Let's try doing that. Was the desired P left the arena? Oh, dude, I have to rename these guys. This is the third time that I had the same error. Third time. Let's keep counting. That was stupid. Okay. Yeah. We can't really do that. Oh, okay. Well, we should also use him down here if we are to do that. Okay. What? That was really wrong. The right side. Let's review that code. Well, no one's gonna die if we don't actually use the wall thing. But let's see. If we are greater than the half size. Hmm. I know. That doesn't look robust. You guys saw that bug, right?
Yeah, okay. Let's do that with the top wall. Um, arena top wall. Okay, now. In the rendering, oh, okay, let's do like the left, arena left. Okay, whenever we initialize these guys, let's also initialize the top wall. Top wall is going to be this guy. Yeah, now if we collide with the top. P, huh? How about that? Okay, arena left in the clear screen. Yeah, we also have to consider that. So this guy is going to be the arena top. And uh, in fact, I don't know if I actually, yeah, I did the P there. And right top. Yeah, and then whenever we do the ball here, we should add minus 30 to the top ball, which will be P. Maybe I should just like block block, maybe I should just not create any blocks, just so we can play around with the ball. Well, that was really wrong. Half size Yeah. So it's going to be the target is the half size Y. Yeah. Something is wrong with the right wall. And the top wall. So top wall DDP, half size Y, top P, drill top wall DDP, top wall DP, top wall P. Yeah. Arena top ball P, top ball DP. Yeah, put that in the wrong place. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now if we get off the screen, we go back, which is better than we were, I suppose, but still weird. Dude, that was awesome. That's really cool. Mm. So we have this problem. Yeah. Oh, the problem is when we add too much, I suppose. When this hit, yeah, because, yeah, since we are moving, yeah, thing is, we are moving the wall when we collide the ball, but we are also moving the ball, so 
we keep pushing and for every time we add 30 so we should just set 30 minus 30 okay plus has no effect yeah it's equals okay nice we solved that bug I suppose let's see it's gonna be hard to get the same uh, same behavior because the problem was it was like close enough so it would keep colliding like let me try to, to get that to work so I have to do like a collision with not much x velocity like this yeah I think this is cool yeah like the wall doesn't want the ball. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Or maybe we should just add an x velocity to the ball when we hit it. Okay, so this is good, but I'm gonna. Mm, I see, going to invert the ball x. Maybe we should do like you invert the ball x, then you say that the ball dp x. This one is negative, right? So this is the maximum. Yeah, let's do it like this. Before we invert. Let's say we are at like 1. So we want a little bit more. So this one's going to be the min. Maybe 30? 30 is too much? I think 30 is too much. Let's do like 5. Let's do, let's do 30 for now. 30 and the ball dpx. Okay, so the idea is... If we... If the ball is pretty slow, like you guys saw, we're just going to add a little bit of velocity, like, let's see. Oh, that didn't do much, did it? It actually, it was slower. Hmm. So, the, is the minimum of 30? Yeah, I think I got it wrong. This guy. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Let's see. Um, not sure. Not sure this is correct. So, the ball... Uh, Oh, I should just clamp it. That'll be easier. So I'm going to clamp, clamp F, minus 30, ball, dp, and 30. Well, it should, should, can't be zero. Right? Oh, that's the problem. In this case. I'm going to add a breakpoint here. Game uh, 835. Game 835. Let's see. So the ball dpx is 36. So it should be still 36. Yeah, so it's the max. That was stupid. Let's see. Okay. Now I think this is going to work nicely. Yeah! This is called getting rejected. <laughs> and maybe 30 is too much. It's too... Maybe we should make it like 10. Oh, uh, not this, this guy. Because we want a little bit, and if, if the ball pushes it a bit, it's okay. It does look nice now. It's not like a glitch, like the other the other time. Yeah. Let's see a little bit. 
Mm. So the left wall, dude, but the spring is super cool. Yeah, the left wall is not working. Max again. Ugh. Yeah, that's ETN. Looking nice. Looking. And we can't. Well, we don't need to do that on the top, just because. Yeah, so the left. It's not working. Because the top also uh, always have have a speed like this. Okay, so both of them are not working. We get the max between ten and the DP. Maybe it should be third. But let me just debug once again. Because I'm not very I didn't I wasn't very confident with that visual result. Uh, let's see. The DP is twenty-two, so it should still be twenty-two. It is. Let's see what it looks like. Oh we can't see what it looks like. Forty-two. Still forty-two, yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna have to be 30. Or maybe have this guy be like 25 or something. Yeah, let's do 30. So the ball gets pushed a little bit when it hits the wall. If it's not fast, if it's not a, yeah, if it's not fast enough. Yeah, see, that was pretty cool. Okay, so now we have moving walls. Looking nice. What can we do now? We can do color, timer, screen shake, make. Oh, yeah, let's do the block block. Well, Game is looking like way better. Let's do particle systems, I think. Oh yeah, we also we also need to do the position with the player. So player movement, player wall collision. Uh, I'm going to do arena left, right. Yeah, and this is arena right. Well, that was. That was it, I think. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that was easy enough. Let's see how how that works. Um, yeah, we do get pushed a little bit. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this kind of makes the player not want to stick to the edges, which is great. Kind of, I think it makes, uh, let's see, let's go. Oh no, yeah, see? So the ball is not going to keep in the edge too much, which is more challenging and more interesting. Dude, come on, let's go. Yeah, it is more challenging, really, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, let's see these guys. Mm -hmm. 
Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> let's, before doing particle systems, let's do three ball color pretty easily here. We have the destroyed on DPY down. So let's do like the trail. Render balls. Let's call that a uh, trail color. So trail color is this guy. If the ball flags, if the ball is supposed to destroy the DPY down, the trail color. Let's make it like full green. Or maybe yellow because of the uh, part up. Missing semicolon before a constant. Yeah. No, that's not the problem. I was missing an equals. Okay, let's see. Yeah, if we speed up the D, the DP, which is what we did there, manually. I mean, it's not going to be the final game, but if we do, the player uh, position gets all crazy. I don't know why. We can also change the comment color. Yeah. Well, let's do that. Hmm. If... Uh, if the ball comet oh we don't do that we do like if comet t is greater than zero we do like full red comet um i'm thinking about yeah, no, okay, I think this is, this is okay. This guy. Yeah, the spring goes nuts if we speed up the DP. Dude, that was awesome. And the comet is awesome. Dude, this is so, so cool. Oh, strong blocks. Oh, strong box and comet. That was cool. <laughs> strong blocks, pretty cool. I think I'm gonna remove the insta kill one because it's not that fun to me. Oh, we we shouldn't. Yeah, the 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 trail should last a little bit longer, even though the ball isn't live, I suppose. Yeah, we got three comments. What? What is that? Okay. So, few things. If the ball is not active, I should maybe still draw its trails. Hmm. Hmm. Let's do it like this. If the boss not active, and oh well, hmm. ball active. Well, anyways, let's just what type? Of, so like make a uh, three ball. Trails not get destroyed when a ball gets destroyed. And then a weird bug. Let's see. Let's see what time. At 2.55 episode. Is it 7? Uh, with the top. Maybe it wasn't just fast enough. We're gonna assume that was the problem. I'm gonna do the same thing. Like, like 
this to the top. So it's going to be the dpy. Alright? Yeah. Okay, but we do have to make the three balls. I don't know if we put like a flag. Oh, we can do like, if it's not active, yeah, do that. We use the destroyed on light down. Um, yeah. Okay, so if the ball is not active and it's not a uh, Mm. This is kind of hacky. So this is one what we want to do. Let's do it like this. If the ball is not active, if the ball is active, yeah, let's do it like this. If the ball is active, we're going to do all that stuff. If not, we're still going to render these guys, yeah, and this is probably temporary, so, oh, no, this is actually the ball rendering. Hmm. No, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do, if the ball is not active, and the ball, uh, Flags is ball destroyed on dpy down, and if it's not destroyed on dpy down, then we continue. Okay, so most balls are not going to be going to pass through that. Now, I can I can do that. Oh, not not this. Since I'm going to spawn this guy on the ball position, I can do this after the the, the render. Okay, so this is better. So now I'm going to test if the ball flags uh, ball active yeah then we can do all that stuff. okay this is better I think let's see okay nice and we should probably change the the ball color uh, uh, the cherry color the individual cherry color I suppose Dude, that was awesome for the comet, but uh, I don't know who cares. For now. Yeah. Okay, no, this is just pure wrong. We can keep that, but that thirty guy. We can keep this, right? Which is positive, yeah, it becomes negative, yeah. You keep that. But that's not the problem. The problem was this the, the coming back of the spring. That was weird. Wall movement. DDP is the target, is the half size Y. Yeah. I don't know. Let's do the block block. Let's see if the target is the... Let's try just the one bounce thing. Let's see what happens. Okay, one bounce is good. So... I don't know what the problem. Let's try... Oh, maybe when we get really fast? But that shouldn't cause that problem. Let's move a little bit in the right to the left. Oh. Oh. 
Oh wait, I accidentally clicked the Do this part. Yeah, okay. That was pretty cool. So I don't know what the problem is there, but I have to watch the video. So yeah. A top wall speed problem. Maybe like episode 7, 2, 25. Okay, make the three balls straight not get a sorry when blocks. Well, I didn't actually check that. I, I'm not sure if we, we fixed that because I was watching for the weird bug. Let's see, but it's going to be really subtle, so it's hard to see. And we're going to add a lot more of these few things just, just for us to get our, our feet wet, so to speak. Yeah, that trail was awesome. Oh, inverted controls. Ugh. Oh, and I died. <laughs> that was cool. At least I survived for a little bit. Dude, this game mode is pretty awesome. Let's see Pong. We didn't actually do anything with Pong today. I think we're gonna have like one more stream of game feel stuff before we go back to the engine because there are a lot of cool stuff yet to do. Like we can do like change the ball size. So we fix this one. Um, let's see. Color, show timer, screen shake, make uh, block destroyed animation. Make start live animation particle systems. We should do that this first. That's cool. And maybe the screen shape after that. Then we can do like increase the ball size. Then we can do color show timers. Make block destroyed animation. Make start level animation. Pong independent. Yeah, then we're gonna fix the game also. Pong independent block movement. That's gonna be really cool. Pong influence the ball speed. Space invaders getting faster as time moves make the squeeze factor also have the spring look. So you don't have a squeeze factor acting too early. Maybe you should just have a size. Yeah, this is like this thing. You can actually see the square in the middle where that should happen. We are already like a way better fuel gain in this. And we did like for, for two and a half hours. I think when we start playing around with the blocks animations, that's gonna be way better. And the thing about fuel is just add a lot of small animations, man. Because animation is nice. We love seeing animation, like it draws the attention. I mean, for this kind of game, right? That you want, it's an action game full of stuff going on. So we want every little thing to be animated. And also have to change the colors. This green is pretty ugly. The player uh, green. Yeah. Let's see. Um. The trail is a, the trail was like the best addition. Also the squash and stretch, but the, since breakout is more of like a. Yeah, I know the trail was a nice addition. Yeah, see, see that. And when you have r rotated racks in our render, it's going to look way better. The trail now it's kind of a pixelated. I don't know if pixelated is the best name for it, but yeah. Okay, this one's great. Okay, I think I'm gonna end for today's stream. If you enjoyed, you can definitely download the game. I'm going to post today's episode here on itch.io. It's danzaydan.itch.io. You can also download the source code and play around with that. And uh, you can also watch all of the streams. We started out, let me go back to my YouTube. YouTube.com slash danzaydan. We showed everything here on the stream. We started out with the blank file and line by line we typed and you saw uh, from the very first beginning and you can watch the whole thing here. And now we have a pretty cool game, don't we? Come on. This is a pretty cool breakout clone. And it's gonna get way cooler, especially when we add audio. 
things like that. Yeah, and with the power-ups, it becomes way cooler, I think. And these crazy guys, right? When we add particle systems, it's gonna be crazy, the Space Invaders one. Let's see, I think, yeah. <laughs> hmm, see? I don't know what's going on with the arena top. Hmm. Maybe we should do like last stream and chase this bug down. I don't know. I think I'm just going to watch the video and then we're going to start out with that bug. We also found that bug on 2236. Okay, so that's it. I hope you liked it and uh, be sure to check out the YouTube channel and the eTarot page. Just click download now, it's for free. You can just take it to the downloads. Or if you want to drop me a tip, it's really appreciated. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.